Friday and Sunday we have games and, um, and so that, that does beat up the body a little bit. So after our day off Monday, we do a mixture of, um, if people played a ton of minutes, we do a lot of technical work where there's not a lot of contact, but then we also um, play for people that maybe didn't play as much and it's a good day to play hard, to play against each other 6v6, to get a lot of shots, a lot of goals scored, a lot of saves for goalkeepers. As we go on further into the week, we just have to you know, be mindful of the opponent and kind of we discuss a little bit their strengths and what they do well as a team so we can be prepared for that. But mostly we just want to keep improving upon the things that, that need improvement and focus on that throughout the week. Keep your feet now, keep your feet. Hey, way to move your feet. Way to move your feet there. See if we can do some quicker restarts. And again, we're not a put your foot on the ball, play it two yards type team, okay? But if there's a time where there's a foul at midfield, Emily started bending, if somebody's there and can play her the ball for 30 yards and off we go, look at what we did. We got balls wide. How many corners did we get today? Real corners where we weren't just saying, we got three, four corners today. Just out of the flow of the play. That last play, possession here, ball to Amanda, one touch forward, we get a corner out of it. Okay, we're gonna score goals on corners this year. On Thursday, it's a little bit more of a technical session where we, again, will reiterate a lot of things that is in the scout for the Friday opponent, um, try to get some good repetitions, get some good thoughts in our heads, and, and go to bed happy, and, um, but also rested a little bit and ready for that Friday-Sunday grind. I saw some good things. I like how we practice this week. I like how we practice this week. I think, I think that, um, now, in a, in a perfect world, we get better next week in our practices. We get better tomorrow in our game from the first four, and it just progresses. And we're, and we're constantly getting better and better. At some points, you get frustrated because nobody does ever credit you, but that's okay. It's hard to find something to relate that to, uh, maybe some sort of superhero that nobody knows about. About an hour before practice, we'll go up to the indoor, grab our gaiters, and we'll load up all the equipment needed for practice, and then we'll split off into groups and make sure that's all set up. We have a few more staff members than what we used to have. We make it all work because we have enough people around, and, and I've got a great staff of folks around me to, to help me make sure we're always moving forward. And, and one, you don't forget anything, and, and two, you're always helping people and doing things right. We're just the guys that will do our job, you don't, we don't need pats on the back, we don't need the press or anything like that, but we'll make sure on game day the helmets are looking nice, the field's all set up, and then the coaches and players can operate smoothly without any questions. No two days in this job are ever the same. I've never gone through the same day twice, ever, in the 25 and a half or 25 years I've been here. Toughest thing about it and it does get to you sometimes it's just working days in a row. It's a seven day week grind. If you're fortunate enough to go to a bowl game, you're gonna work every day in the month of, right after Thanksgiving, all the way through the whole month of December till the game's over with and you come back and you'll take two to three days to unpack. So August to whenever you're done is, is a sprint and you have to uh, get used to that. The well, most rewarding part would be the way the players and the coaches treat us and then being able to share that success with the team. Um, it's like we're a part of the squad, we're just not the ones playing, we're the ones taking care of them on the sidelines.
tradition. Mm -hmm. Ambition. Exploration. Inspiration. You feel it when you step on campus at the University of Iowa. The energy and pride of students inspired by our history. And excited about our future. When you join the Hawkeye family, you're a part of it all. Be a part of it. Be a part of it. Be a part of it. Be a Hawkeye. When you're out there practicing, you, you try to you try to recreate nerves. And my whole life, I've been standing over that three foot putt and just telling myself, okay, this is to win the U.S. Open. And now I'm going to the U.S. Open, and it's it's crazy. about four years old uh, my grandpa uh, used to watch me and in the backyard I would swing his golf clubs and um, he ended up cutting a set down for me and um, I just started hitting balls over the neighbor's fence into their pool. As I got older um, I don't know it was just always fun for me I was I had a pretty good swing I could hit it as good as the kids that were bigger than me, so I'm just motivation. I just hate not being good at things, so when I was with the older kids, it would help me develop faster. It's an individual sport, and so my success is, is based on my work, and um, I can control what I do, and being so competitive, all the responsibility on you is, is challenging. If, if the person who picked me up hitchhike and said, hey, you're going to be a part of the, you know, four national championships. Davis wins it at 118 pounds, and the University of Iowa has claimed national championship. So you're going to wrestle the Iowa State meet. Well, here we go, 142 pounds. You're going to get three degrees. You're going to be a professor here at the University of Iowa. I would have thought they are insane. You know, I got nothing but him to thank for it. When I look at the big picture of all this, you know, I mean, I grew up in a house where we had eight pe or seven people, eight counting my mom. And, you know, there are times where our toilet didn't work. My mom's a bartender, so you have this much money and you either get food or you hire a plumber. So you get food. But you go from that part of the world to hitchhike into college with a dream like, hey, I want to wrestle with Dan Gable. And I talked to Coach Gable. He was we're in the middle of a workout, which at the time I didn't know I shouldn't talk to him then, but I talked to him anyway. I usually make him sit in the stands for a while just to, so they can see what really takes place and really whether they want to be a part of it. Once I get the feel for them, and I, I pr pretty much tell them they can't quit, <laughs> you know, but that doesn't mean they won't. But I don't like it when they do, but this guy didn't. We're a lot better than last year. You know, we're going to find out and over the next two months who we're better than now. And it's tough. You know, when you look at the conference, you think, okay, we can move up, but who's moving down? You know, that's, the, that's the joy, the fun, the challenge. And, uh, you know, the greater the challenge, the greater the rewards. Mm -hmm. 
Well, coming off last season, we didn't have the best record. We were ranked last in the Big Ten, and most of our matches were won early in preseason. One of our main goals this season as a team goal is to make the NCAA tournament. And one way that we can work towards that goal is to win more of our preseason games. Number one for the Hawkeye Challenge is just like really great and really exciting, especially for our new players to get to play in Carver and like the introductions and just how we do everything here. It's just really exciting and good for them to see that before we start Big Tens. Every weekend we have an opportunity to play a team where you know we have to bring our A game and it's just an opportunity to do something really big for our ranking or just for our team. Hey Hawkeye fans, don't miss the action on Mediacom Court at Carver Hawkeye Arena this fall with an exciting season of Iowa Hawkeye Volleyball. For only $30, you get two season tickets, two Iowa Volleyball t-shirts, weekly emails, and much more. Seniors Nikki Daly, Rachel Bedell, and Bethany Yeager want to see you at Carver Hawkeye Arena this season. To order, call 1-800-IA-HAWKS or visit HawkeyeSports.com. We'll see you at Carver Hawkeye Arena this fall. Go Hawks! What is the Iowa experience? A scenic campus. World-class education. Extraordinary professors. Exciting Big Ten sports. A thriving art scene. Lifelong friends. Experience Iowa for yourself. Call 1-800-553-4692 or visit uiowa.edu. We have a certain way of doing things. You'll see it in the determination of our students, in the classroom and on our fields, in the collaboration among our faculty that lead to great innovation and change, in the vision of our writers, artists, and doctors. Bringing the world to Iowa and Iowa to the world. It's the Hawkeye way. Can Hartley and the Hawks do it? Hartley sprinting back. Into the, it's caught, it's in, the good. five, yes, a touchdown. touchdown! I can't believe it! A touchdown to Marv Cook! Holy cow! Can't believe it! Six seconds to go! Hartley to Cook, and the Hawks have the lead. I was actually on my way out to Idaho for a golf tournament and my dad was like, why don't we stop uh, in Iowa City, it's right along I-80 on the way. And I really didn't want to, but 
Uh, we did, and I, I put it on my list, and I went back for a football game, and I loved the campus. It was a no-brainer. I'm really excited for her. She, this is a great opportunity. She has, loves golf, you know, has a great family, and um, has really strong aspirations to, to do the very best that she can, and um, I think this is a great stage for her to, to see where her game is at. You know, we, we work a lot on the mental side of the game. Uh, most of these players, when they get to this level, have the tools to be pretty successful from a golf standpoint. Um, you know, they have the shots, or they're pretty consistent ball strikers, but it really comes down to being able to play and putting it together between the ears, um, managing emotions, frustrations, you know, all those types of things. And um, I really feel like Chelsea in her senior year, especially her spring season, was finally kind of doing that. I realized my first semester of my last year that I wanted to um, stay in the golf business, whether it be coaching or playing. And my second semester, I started to get things rolling. I was starting to play well, but I still wasn't happy with the way I was playing. I mean, I had a great time in college. I learned a lot from all my coaches. And, but I, I didn't feel like I had reached my potential, so I, I'm gonna keep playing until I do that. When I won, just, I kind of, I just like stood there and I looked at my caddy and I was like, did I just qualify for the US Open? And he was like, yeah. And I, I was just so happy to finally, finally have a breakthrough. I don't think my dad believed me when I told him at first. <laughs> um, but, uh, cause I was so frustrated going into the qualifier uh, with the way, with the scores I was putting up. And so when I qualified, he was shocked and my mom was started to cry and my, my grandparents were beside themselves. So I think Nolan was more excited than I was at one point. So it was, it was fun being able to tell them good news. I was just anxious waiting for the phone call when she called and I, I lost it and it was, really exciting. It's motivating since I look up to her. It's just cool to see how far she's made it. My brother and I are pretty close. Um, we've bonded a lot over golf. He caddies for me a lot uh, and sometimes I feel a little bad that uh, I can be a little demanding but um, I mean it's great to have that family support and my sister's good too, my, my parents are awesome. It's pretty cool that they support me so much to you know, take vacation time to come watch me chase a white ball around, so it's pretty cool. There are over 24,000 bridges in Iowa, but only one connects University of Iowa hospitals and clinics to Iowa River Landing. From pediatrics and women's health to cardiology and routine exams, world-class medical care can be found at a new convenient location in Coralville. Iowa River Landing is here, and it's designed just for you. For an appointment, call 319-467-2000.
track the tradition and keep score at iowacornsciHawkSeries.com. So typically we'll have one or two weekends uh, pre-conference that we can host something. Well, it gives us one an opportunity to play at home prior to conference. You know, we've played three or four teams that'll help prepare us for Big Ten. It, 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 you just love the challenge, you embrace it and you go with it. You know, every weekend we're playing a team that's in the top 15 in the country. Every weekend we're playing against some, you know, probably two or three All-Americans. And uh, it's fun, you know, it's, and part of the reason that you play in the conference is one, to embrace the challenge, but two, I think to become the best volleyball player that you can become. Great job, let's see. Yeah. Well, really right now what we're doing is every week we're looking at goals, every week we're establishing goals. Now that we're moving into conference, you know, our weeks are all going to look the same. Mondays, we'll, you know, we'll watch a lot of film of ourselves over the weekend matches or maybe from practices the week before for those that didn't get to play much that weekend. It's more light, you know, we're not going to put a lot of stress on their legs. So for probably the first day or two days, we focus on things that we didn't do as well the previous weekend or um, things we want to work on. Towards the beginning of the week, we kind of focus on the other team's hitters and stuff like that. We'll start off with some longer practices at the beginning and um, towards the end we'll slow it down and work on more like six on six, basically what we're going to be doing, like a walkthrough kind of. Thursday, a lot of it's prep for the opponents, you know, figuring out that one more thing that we need to work on prior to the weekend matches coming up. The day before game is kind of just like an overview. We go back to the things that we struggled on in the beginning of the week, and then we end on the, the big things to focus on for the, the upcoming game. I just get a thrill out of watching the team, watching each player develop, and then watching a team come together. That's what drives me, that's what motivates me every day, is to watch them take on new challenges. And, you know, every year brings challenges, every practice brings challenges. Last year, our team went through like a lot of adversity with injuries and whatnot. But this year, I think that we um, are coming out with a different mentality, just that, you know, we might not be the biggest team in the Big Ten, but we have so much more to offer. We're a faster team, and it's just like every single match, we have an opportunity to win and do great things. I'm kind of a late bloomer, I think, in, res in wrestling and in academics, and that has a lot to do with my childhood, I think. But uh, I pretty much stepped up to whatever was in front of me and liked the challenge. I've always like gravitated towards a certain person. He was tough in practice, people liked to work out with him, or they didn't like to work out with him, depending on you know just how tough they wanted to go. He was one of these guys that was motivating in the room to everybody else, and helped out even though he wasn't the starter. But he got his chance, and he capitalized on that chance. It's Mitch Kelly for Iowa down at 142 again while Greg Randall takes care of that bad hamstring. And Michael Carr for Iowa State. This would be a real run and gun. They both know how to throw. He surprised me. I mean, he really stepped up. Uh, there again, it's a throw. And he, he was strong. I mean, he was throwing some people around and doing some great things. I held on and got a 15-11 win, and we ended up winning 18-15. And if I'd lost that match, we would have lost 18-15. If you're going to go out any other way, that's a hell of a way to go out as a walk-on. And the winner, Mitch Kelly, 15-11. He brings the Hawkeyes back. And he probably didn't surprise himself as much as he surprised a lot of people. Uh, just people didn't really know. I didn't really know. And I learned lessons from certain things. Uh, I, you, know, you don't really know what you have until you put them out in the front of the lights. I actually probably would not have got my advanced degrees without this guy here because he, he hired me as a grad assistant and I was able to do that and teach in the College of Ed and earn my advanced degrees that way. So I really didn't go into any debt, which would have been hard to do where I started. So it's a really great thing. I didn't even think of him as a mentor really when I was working with him. He was a coach for me. And then as I started coaching with him, I started to see him more that way. And as the years have progressed, it's like we're just kind of like friends, but also no matter what, he's always a teacher and he's always a coach. I just think it's all about relationship building. And I think I learned a lot from Dan Gable and I think maybe from my mom. And you know, anything she needs, I want to help her. And the reason is, is she taught me to be that way. And she did that for me for years and years and years. And then I meet him and he's the same way where 
you know, he took care of me way more about my like social needs or my, you know, uh, getting beat up in here so much I'm been crying in the corner. And he'd wait till he thought the moment was right and come over and talk to me and build me up for the next day or whatever. And when someone does that for you, I just feel like you, you feel like you almost owe it to them to perform well or to try hard or to work hard and not give up. And I think the same way with my teaching. It's like I want my students to feel like I care enough about them that they don't want to let me down. You don't just focus on your 10 kids that make your starting lineup. If you got 40 kids, like you said, in the room, you got to focus on all 40 of them. And I think good coaches, good teachers, they get everybody to understand what is going on. And the ones that have a lot of problems are usually the ones that don't really ha establish those relationships and build that communication to make sure everybody knows uh, just how important everything is. It's like you learn things from your mentors and you kind of see what works and what doesn't and what you like and what you don't like. I consider any time like I win any award or I um, get good feedback from a student that I had an impact on their lives, I think of him pretty much right away.